So good morning to you once again. We are now going to do module 2. We did module 1 yesterday. To take a quick review, <coughs> in module 1 we covered the basic introduction to the slope deflection method. We showed how it could be applied to simple beams and frames involving joint rotation. The joint rotations could be known or could be unknown. We saw how to deal with those problems. And in today's session, we will look at examples where we can simplify the slope deflection equation when you have hinged end support. And also, we look at the problem of dealing with support settlements, which result in chord rotation. This is a very important topic. With this, we broadly cover slope deflection method as applied to beams and frames without unknown sway. In the next module, which we will do tomorrow, we will deal with problems involving sway. So, for a quick review, uh, in today's session, I will first begin with a review of what we did yesterday. And then we will show how to take advantage of hinged end supports, how to modify the method. We will apply this to example problems with known and unknown joint rotation. Then we look at the problem of including support settlements or chord rotation, how the slope deflection equations are modified. And we will do some problems where you have differential support settlements. These are known chord rotations. When the chord rotations are unknown, we refer to the problem as sway type problem. We look at that in the third module. Yesterday, the, one of you asked a question about the proof of how the stiffness is 4EI by L. And uh, I want to go through that once again. So, if you recall, we began with a simply supported beam, prismatic beam with a concentrated moment at one end and we said there are many ways of proving that the slope that you get, the rotation that you get theta is given, is related to m and the relationship is m is equal to 3 ei by l into theta. The bending moment diagram is linear varying from 0 at the far end a to the maximum value of m at the near end. And this can be proved in many ways. The conjugate beam method is the easiest method. And you can also prove that the slope that you get at the other end is theta by theta. Now we want to extend this to a situation where the end A is fixed against rotation. To do that, we will take advantage of this very uh, analysis. And now we do a solution. We apply a moment at A deliberately to cancel out the rotation theta by 2, which means we now have to apply a clockwise rotation so that we end up with a rotation theta by 2. So we have to apply a clockwise moment. And by the definition of stiffness, we the moment we need to apply will be 3 Ei by L times the rotation theta by 2. And uh, as a result of this, I get a rot other end O, which will be half of theta by 2, and that is theta by 4. So the net result is, when I add up these two uh, pictures, I get a zero slope at A. I get a net moment at A at O, which is equal to M. I get a net moment at A, which is equal to M by 2. And I get a net slope at O, which is not theta anymore, but it's reduced by theta by 4. So the net rotation at O is 3 theta by 4. Let me call that theta naught. And the stiffness measure is simply m divided by theta naught. And we can prove very easily it turns out to be 4 Ei by L. That's how we got this picture, which we showed you in the last class. We get a bending moment diagram like this. So remember, when the other end is fixed, the stiffness measure is 4 Ei by L, and you get a carryover moment with the same clockwise direction, which is equal to m 
by 3. So, to sum up the basic slope deflection equations for any intermediate beam in a continuous beam system is given by these two simple expressions. MAB is MFAB, the fixed end moment at A, plus 4 EI by L theta A plus 2 EI by L theta B, and MBA is MFBA plus 2 EI by L theta A plus 4 EI by L theta B. You should know the derivation of this, and after that, you can mechanically write this. Theta A and theta B may be known, may be unknown. They will be known usually when you have a known rotational slip, usually they are unknown. With these equations, you can write as many equations as there are beams in your system. You identify the degree of kinematic indeterminacy, the unknown rotations and then you, if you have three unknown rotations, say theta A, theta B, theta C, you need three equations of equilibrium which you get by applying moment equilibrium, you solve those equations, find out the unknowns, plug them back into the slope deflection equation, you got the beam end moment. And once you have that, you can draw your bending moment diagram. From the free body diagram, you get the shear forces, shear force diagram, you solve your problem. We also looked at situations where uh, you can have a guided fixed support at an extreme end and typically this situation you encounter when you have symmetry in beam system and the line of symmetry passes through the middle of a beam. In such situations, you can, you can, you know for sure that the slope at B is 0 because that is the axis of symmetry. You have a deflection there delta B which you can ignore and the slope deflection equations now modify to a very simple form. MAB is MFAB plus EI by L into theta A and MBA is MFBA minus EI by L into theta A. We gave you several example problems yesterday. We also gave you a small homework assignment if you remember. We asked you to try out this simple problem. It is a portal frame. It is not a portal frame. It is a rigid jointed frame and uh, it is subjected to loading not only in the beam BC but also in the vertical column element AB and uh, EI values are different for these two elements and you are supposed to solve it. So, let us quickly go through the solution. So, in the solution, <coughs> the first step is to um, identify the degree of indeterminacy. We are now assuming three unknown rotations. In the modification you are going to learn in this module, you can even eliminate theta c for the simple reason that the bending moment at c in b c is 0. You know it beforehand. You do not need to prove it, but we do not take advantage of that shortcut as yet. We will pretend we need to know theta c and we proceed. So, having identified the two unknown rotations, we work out the fixed end moments for the two elements. We treat them both as beam elements. So, you have the vertical element AB and you can find MFAB and MFBA and uh, you can apply simple uh, equation. When you have a constant load in the mid span, the fixed end moment is WL by 8 and on the left side, it is anti-clockwise minus 100 and the right side it is clockwise, so it is plus 100. And for the element BC, you have a UDL, so the formula is Q naught L squared by 12 minus on the left side and plus on the right side. So, you can summarize all the fixed end moments by these. Basically, what we are doing is once you identify the unknown rotations, your primary structure is a structure in which those unknown rotations are arrested. So, theta b and theta c is made equal to 0 and in doing so, you get fixed end moments and you derive that. <coughs> so, the next step is to write down your slope deflection equations. You have four equations because you have two elements. You can mechanically write out the equations. We have done this before and substitute the known and unknown values. For example, theta a is 0, so you can eliminate that. 
and MFAB and MFB is known, so you can write down those values. Similarly, for the element BC, you can write MBC and MC. So now you've got four equations. You can write them elegantly in a matrix uh, vector form. Uh, the first column shows you the fixed end moments which you've got. The next matrix gives you the coefficients of your stiffness measures. You have two unknowns, theta b and theta c. You can include ei along with that, and you need to find a solution for ei theta b, ei theta c. Plug it back into these equations, you will get the end moment. Now, to find out the two unknowns, you need equilibrium equation. So that's the next step. Corresponding to each theta b, theta unknown, you have to write a moment equilibrium. Now, the moment equilibrium for theta b is MBA plus MBC is equal to the net moment applied at B. There is no load applied at B in terms of moment, so that is equal to zero. So you pull out your second and third equations, add them up, you got your first equilibrium. Similarly, you write down the second equilibrium equation. Theta C is zero, MC is zero. So you have to simply write MCB equal to zero. And you've got two simultaneous equations. You need to solve them. You can solve them by end of your choice, and you get a solution for EI theta B and EI theta C. With these solutions, you plug them back into your slope deflection equations. And for convenience, I've written everything here. You've got your final solutions. And remember, a positive sign indicates a clockwise moment, a negative sign indicates an anti-clockwise moment. So you now write, the, draw the free body, separate out the beam and the column. You've got your solutions. You start putting your arrows, your curved arrows, for A, B, and B, A, the moment C at B. Similarly, for B, C, that's what you get. M, C, B is zero. That's the equilibrium equation you applied. And it's interesting to note that at B, you have two equal and opposite moments, which is the way it should be because when you join the two elements, you sh should not get any moment because there's no concentrated moment applied at P. After this, you can find out your shear forces in the beam and the column. And uh, what is shear in the beam becomes an actual force in the column. What is shear in the column becomes an actual force in the beam. Then you're in a position to now draw your actual force diagram, you have compression in both the members and your shear force diagram. I presume you know how to do all this. Slope deflection method assumes that you know all this. We, once we get the free bodies, we've got the complete solution. Draw the bending moment diagram, and it's good to attempt to draw the deflected shape so that you roughly know uh, where you get hogging and where you get sagging. So you can see from this picture. Draw the points of contraflexure. You have an anti-clockwise rotation at B and, a, and one at C, and uh, it's more or less matching the bending moment diagram. This is a practice worth cultivating.